Hello, once again from the Prim Reaper. I wanted to talk briefly about an attitude that I've been encountering over the last little while that has given me pause. Let me give you a little bit of context. At CAFE's national conference, Momentum, there was some discussion in one of the groups about the need to control our image as an organization. That is, we should be showcasing those who want to focus on the goal of equality and collaboration, of reaching out to others and building bridges. Those who have been hurt, those who are angry, well, they should be supported, of course, but they should be supported privately. They should not be the public face of the organization. Obviously, because if we put forth that angry vibe, people may be intimidated and might not want to listen to us any longer. They might simply dismiss us. It seems reasonable on its face. However, there's something about it that troubles me. I've talked quite a lot about issues like toxic masculinity and how the APA has put forward a certain ideal for healing for men that involves challenging behaviors that supposedly don't serve them well. A lot of these kinds of notions support the idea of men sharing their emotions, but as we've seen time and time again, it's often a sort of constrained idea of emotion we're talking about. When we say we don't want men to feel like they have to bottle up their feelings, we mean certain feelings in specific. We're referring to feelings of sadness, or even better, more positive feelings like tenderness or affection. These are the kinds of things we want men to express. We're not talking about things like anger. We may not be saying exactly, bottle up your anger, mind you, but we are saying, keep that nasty business behind closed doors, please. After all, we wouldn't want to come across as divisive. We wouldn't want to push people away. We wouldn't want people to feel intimidated because then they might feel uncomfortable supporting our cause. This is not just true of the individual who said this at CAFE either. This is true of anyone who talks about these issues. You bring up any group related to men's issues and one comment you might be likely to field, if not starting off with comments about how those guys just hate women, is but those guys are just so angry. And here's where I start to scratch my head a little bit. What is so wrong with men feeling angry about the experiences they've gone through? Is it not expected that a father alienated from his children for five years should feel a little angry about the matter? Is it wrong for a man falsely accused of sexual assault who winds up spending time in jail to feel a little testy about the experience? Wouldn't you get your hackles up if you were discriminated against in a job opportunity because of your gender? Why in the world would we find any of this to be a problem? But it's not a problem, Prim, some of you might say. We fully support men in expressing their anger over these situations. We just don't want to make it the public face of our activism. And again, to an extent, I can get where this is coming from. Of course, there's the matter of having smart business sense, wanting to put your best foot forward and all. I'm not a dummy. I get the politics around it and why we have to know when to hold them and know when to fold them and all that. But there's still something about it that rubs me the wrong way. Let's think about it this way. When a woman has an unpleasant experience she wants to talk about, say she went through a terrible sexual assault or suffered chronic abuse at the hands of her violent spouse, do we tell her that she shouldn't share her story? That it might make people uncomfortable or that her anger might put other people off? No, not at all. In fact, not only do we not do that, but we often thank her for sharing, for having the courage to tell us the details of her ordeal. And of course we should do that. After all, if that's what this woman feels she needs in order to be able to heal, she should be supported in doing it. Look at Greta Thunberg, for example. I know for some she's a contentious figure right now, but for the very most part, people are not responding to her anger with calls for her to step back and keep it behind closed doors because it makes us uncomfortable. On the contrary, her anger is propelling her ever further into the public eye, winning her high-powered speaking engagements and critical acclaim for speaking truth to power about climate change issues. If Greta made cutesy wootsy little puppy dog eyes and said, pup 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 please do something about climate change, do you think she would have gotten much more than a patronizing pat on the head with a yes dear? I doubt it. We probably wouldn't even know her name, but because she's so passionately angry about these issues, she's pretty much all I've heard about for two weeks straight. This is not an uncommon treatment of women. 
You know, a lot of gals like to complain about their experiences of being told to smile more. But when you get right down to it, when women get angry, people listen to them. People support them and take them seriously and want to make changes to help give them what they're asking for. It's actually part of the reason why the whole feminist, the patriarchy be keeping us down mindset doesn't really fly with me. Women got mad and demanded the vote. They got it. Women got mad and demanded equal pay. They got it. In fact, they continued to get mad, and now examples have come to light where it turns out that businesses were actually giving their female employees more than their male counterparts. Women got mad when it turned out affirmative action policies were beginning to advantage men in universities due to their dwindling numbers. So said affirmative action policies are now being challenged despite women's clear advantage in higher education. For all the talk about women being dismissed and demeaned in our society, when women get angry, at large, society jumps to hear what they have to say. But we don't extend this same courtesy to men. I find this to be a problem obviously because of the hypocrisy involved, though I'm sure literally nobody watching this video is even remotely surprised that such a double standard exists. After all, we extend women a great number of social sanctions that we wouldn't think to extend to men. We're comfortable with hearing her pain and anguish. We want to reach out and help her when she is suffering in some way. We want to show solidarity. We even want to be lenient on women who commit wrongs in our society just because she's a woman and her crime was excusable, the result of a troubled situation, or even just simply not that bad when compared with a similar crime committed by a man. But that's not the only reason I'm bothered by all this. When we tell men that they should only express their anger in private behind closed doors, we're sending them a certain kind of message. We're telling them that there is something wrong with their pain. We may not be telling them that directly. Of course no one is directly saying your pain is something you ought to be ashamed of, or something that we just don't talk about in polite company. But that's the message we're sending. We're saying that, for whatever reason, your anger is that uncomfortable elephant in the room that nobody wants to be seen as being a part of or outwardly addressing it in a supportive manner. I even had a comment on one of my videos recently, essentially chastising me for encouraging anger in one of my videos. I believe it was the incel video. Now, it was never my intention, strictly speaking, to stoke the fires of anyone's anger in that video, but instead to extend a certain level of empathy and understanding for why someone in that position might be so hurt, and yes, angry. I don't see a problem in offering a supportive ear or shoulder to people who are feeling that way, and I really don't see a problem with offering a space for those men to express their feelings of frustration, i.e. my comments section. If you think about it, they really don't have a lot of other places to do that where people are willing to listen and publicly acknowledge their pain. It's not always going to be nice. It's not even always going to be respectful. I'm not saying I have to agree with all of it. I can let stuff roll off my back and not take it personally. But by allowing people a space to get their feelings out in a relatively harmless way, hey, maybe they might feel more heard and less likely to turn to worse echo chambers that actually are likely to help that anger fester into something more antisocial. And even then, being able to talk about these issues in private in a supportive setting like a counseling relationship or friendship is a fine, healthy, and sometimes even necessary thing. I would never think to diminish the importance of this. But all I'm saying here is that we shouldn't hide these men away behind closed doors and tell them that their anger isn't for the public sphere. If we want to get serious about men's mental health, we have to stop being scared to publicly address the more uncomfortable aspects of their experiences. We have to stop worrying that someone might be put off, or worse, offended by their anger. Now, putting in a brief pause here for the obvious disclaimer, I'm not just talking about someone spouting off F this, F that, F women and the horse they rode in on, or anything like that. Obviously, that sort of thing is never going to be a particularly productive way of communicating, no matter who it's coming from. After all, there is a difference between being angry and wanting to vent, and just being a butthole trying to bring someone else down. What I am saying is that, hey, maybe the anguished man who has been trying desperately to see his kids for years should be given a podium in the public sphere to bring to light what he deals with on a daily basis. 
Maybe the man who has been falsely accused and sent to jail should be given a spot on the evening news to talk about how angry this has made him. By addressing these things in public, we would humanize and personalize those experiences. We would bring to light issues that many people might not even know about on a regular basis. Most of all, we would give these men who have been hurt a chance to feel heard in a way that doesn't minimize or eschew their experiences. As someone with some experience in behaviorism and cognitive behaviorism, I can tell you that hiding men's anger away because it might make other people uncomfortable is the last thing we want to do to begin challenging that irrational phobia. Now, to close off this video on a positive note, I wanted to tell you all that the Center for Men and Families in Calgary is moving into the final steps of opening full time. We've come a long way, but it's finally happening. I really think that this is something to be celebrated, not only because now we can provide needed support services to men who are struggling with a wide variety of mental health issues, but also because there are always those folks who like to say, well, you talk about these issues, but what are you really doing for men? And now we can give them a tangible success that our efforts have produced. On that note, in order to be able to successfully run these services in the long term, we do need help in ongoing funding for those services. As a result, we are putting forth another push for your support either on Patreon or on the cafe page directly. As always, a portion of the proceeds that I make for every video goes to the center as well. But hey, if you've ever been asked by some jerk on the internet, well, you complain a lot, but what have you ever really done for men? Well, now you can throw this in their face and you can say that you donated to help fund services actively helping men's needs. Thank you so much for your support, both for me and for the center, and I hope to see you all again in the next one.